this movie, I want to take a look at working with Camera Raw in Photoshop CS6, and in particular, working with the new process version 2012. So to start with, I have MiniBridge open here, and if I select these three photographs at the bottom, these would be good photographs for me to do a demo with. And you can see that when I double click them, this opens up the Camera Raw dialog hosted in Photoshop. To start with, let's select this photograph over here. And what I'm going to do here is show you the process version 2012 controls so that you can compare them with the result that can be seen here using process 2010. Just to explain, uh, with uh, the last version of Photoshop, Photoshop CS5, this saw the introduction of process 2010 and a legacy process 2003. In 2010, offered some improvements in terms of things like the, uh, the noise reduction and also some fine tuning to the behavior of the fill light and the recovery sliders over here. It was a good upgrade to, uh, to Photoshop and to Camera Raw and allowed you to uh, produce better quality images in my view. Now with the latest process uh, 2012, I think Adobe have changed the rules again and um, come up with a really good new uh, way of editing images. One that is ideally suited not just for working with legacy images, but I think is also going to be more future-proof, looking ahead to future camera developments, uh, especially when, it's com when it comes to processing images with a high contrast range. And I'm going to come on to show you some extreme examples after this first photograph. So anyway, let's get started with a nice, simple standard version here. This is the photograph also that I was demonstrating with in chapter three in the book. To begin with, you can see in the bottom right corner down here, there is an exclamation mark. And as you can see on the right, um, this indicates that we're currently working in process 2010, or it could be process 2003. Anyway, it just shows you that um, when this exclamation mark is here, it shows the fact that um, there is a more recent uh, process version that you can update to. And by clicking on that, you can see the sliders on the right update here. And we are now working in process 2012. Nothing much has changed yet in the picture. The conversion that's taken place from process 2010 to 2012 has left the image looking pretty much the same as it was. But we do now have these sliders that we can use over here in the basic panel to control how the image looks. Before coming onto that, let me just show you another way that you can switch process versions. If we come over here to the camera calibration panel, you can see at the top, here's a menu here for process, which says currently we're working with process 2012. And you can use this to go backwards. So if you want to go back to working process 2010 or even process 2003, if you want, you can do so using the menu here. And again, if I click on this uh, exclamation button, we can switch to the most recent 2012. So let me go over to the basic panel now and we'll look at making some adjustments using the new Process 2012. I won't make any changes to the uh, color temperature settings. So let's come down to the exposure slider. And this now is your primary uh, brightness and highlight clipping uh, slider all merged into one. Previously with Process 2010 and also 2003, you had an exposure slider and then also uh, below at the bottom you had a brightness slider and both appear to be kind of doing the same thing, although there were some important distinctions between the two. And as well as that, to some extent, the fill light and even the black slider also could have an impact on the overall brightness of an image. So there was quite a bit of overlap between the different sliders and also some confusion in some users' mind as to which would be the best to, to use. Here is a little bit simpler now. So you just have a single exposure slider and you can use this to adjust the overall brightness of an image, making it uh, darker or brighter. Now to start off with, I'm going to brighten this image quite a bit because I want to make it appear brighter and also uh, bring out more contrast. So I'm gonna start off with a plus 0.9 exposure increase there. Beneath that you have the contrast slider which is kind of the same as the contrast slider in pre previous process versions although as described in the book you'll find that there are some subtle differences with the way this slider behaves but it's not too different from how it was previously so you can drag to the right to increase the contrast and then you can drag to the left to decrease, decrease the contrast and here I'm also going to um, move the slider over to the right and I'm just going to apply 
some quite strong contrast to the image at this point. Next, we have two sliders grouped together, the highlights and the shadows in the middle. I group them together because they complement each other in the way that they work. And for most image adjustments, work, working with the exposure slider and the contrast, together with the highlights and the shadows, may be all the adjustments that you actually need to make to an image in order to get to your desired um, endpoint. So I think of these two as working in tandem. And what they do is the highlights works from the midtones uh, to the highlights, and the shadow slider works from the midtones down to the shadows. Now there's a little bit of overlap between the two of them where the, uh, the highlight slider does extend slightly from the midtones into the shadows and the shadow slider does extend slightly from the shadows into the, into the highlight areas. Um, but they do work in a complementary way, so that by taking the highlight slider over to the right, you can increase the brightness in the highlights region, and by taking it over to the left, you can decrease the brightness in that region. And here I'm just going to give it a minus 30 adjustment to just take those mid-tone to highlight areas down slightly. Then with the shadow slider, as I mentioned, that does the opposite. This allows you to brighten the shadow detail, or you can darken it down. And here I'm just going to brighten it up to make it a bit uh, brighter there in the, mid, in the uh, mid-tone to shadow areas. And at this stage, as I said, you can get pretty close to the finished uh, result. Another thing which I haven't mentioned so far is I'm working on a raw image here, but the adjustments that you apply using Process 2012 can be applied just as easily to non-raw images such as JPEGs or TIFFs. And this is another bonus about working with Process 2012 because you can share these settings between raw and non-raw images more effectively because the starting points are identical in both cases. And um, something interesting to point out here as well is that if you've uh, tried playing with the Adobe Revel program, which is designed for tablet devices, which is at the moment um, primarily just for working with JPEG images, you'll notice that the um, adjustment controls in there are just exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. So it's making use of just those four sliders, which you see at uh, use here in Process 2012. Those are the only adjustments that you got for adjusting images, JPEG images, that is, working with Adobe Revel. But Working in Photoshop Camera Raw, you do have the whites and black sliders down here. So these couple of sliders are really fine-tuning uh, sliders that you add at the end, if as uh, when uh, necessary. So you don't need to use them all the time, but you might want to use them just to fine-tune the image after doing the major adjustments with the above four sliders. And I find it useful at this point to hold down the Option key on a Mac or an Alt key on a PC and drag the slider just to see where those end clipping points are and then decide just how much you want to clip them, if you want to clip them at all. So I think in this case, I want to make sure that I don't lose any detail in the highlights and the shadows, so I'm just going to apply a negative amount there. And then lastly, we have the black slider, and with this slider, you can adjust this to increase the amount of clipping or decrease the amount of uh, clipping. So by dragging to the left, you can clip the shadows more, and by dragging to the right, you can uh, ease off on that. And in this instance, if I hold down the Option key again on a Mac or an Alt key on a PC, I can see just exactly where I want to clip those shadows. And then I'll decide that maybe it's best for me to clip them there at that point. So at this stage, you can see a uh, finished result uh, of uh, making these adjustments that as, as I've done here, working in Process 2012. And if I want to see the before version, I can perhaps come up here and click on the preview. So there you can see the starting point, and there's the end point, which I think makes a nicer looking image. Now, this photograph here is the one which I used a demo with in chapter three of the book. I chose it as a fairly typical picture, and you will find uh, a raw photo, a DNG photo that is, available uh, to download uh, via, the, uh, via the website. So now let's look at some slightly more sort of tricky images, just to show you um, just how far you can push things working with Process 2012. These photographs, this one and the next one I'm going to show you, uh, these aren't actually uh, shown in the book. Um, I'm just going to show them in this particular demo. And again, I'm starting with a photograph here which is in Process uh, 2010, and it's using the default values. So I'll just click on the exclamation mark to do the conversion to Process 2012. 
Um, I haven't mentioned previously that there is always an auto option that you can choose. You can click on this button to see what that does to an image and this will automatically set the sliders that you can see here, the exposure contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, to uh, try and sort of work out what might be the best optimum auto setting, auto tone setting that is, to apply to an image. Or if you prefer, you can just start from the defaults and you can work through these to, um, to, to apply your own custom settings. Here again, I'm not gonna adjust the white balance in this instance. I'm just gonna go straight in and work on uh, adjusting these sliders here. So to begin with, let's look at adjusting the exposure slider. As before, um, dragging to the right allows me to increase the brightness in the image and dragging to the left allows me to, um, to darken it. And I'm really particularly concerned about trying to bring out some of the highlight detail in the mist on the top of the mountain in the distance. So I think I'll just take the image actually down a little bit bright, uh, down a little bit here just to decrease the brightness and then I'll come back to the contrast a little bit later. I'm going to know, now go straight down to the highlight slider and try and make sure I can really bring in a lot of detail there into the, uh, into the highlights so that we can now see more information up here in the mist. But obviously the picture is very dark down here at the bottom so I'm now going to do a lot of heavy lifting here using the shadow slider to bring out more detail down there and I'm going to go for quite an extreme adjustment so you can see that by increasing the shadows there as well as doing what I did just then with the highlight slider we now get to see a lot more detail both in the shadows and in the highlight zones and it's immediately looking like a lot uh, uh, a much nicer image and then if I want to I can then fine-tune the the white slider so that I can raise a little bit of clipping there now because I'm actually doing quite a bit of work with that slider it suggests to me that maybe I could perhaps increase the exposure brightness a little bit more rather than doing that. Let me just come back and adjust the white slider again there. And I think I'll just leave the setting around about there. And then come down to the blacks, holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. Don't really need to do anything there to adjust the blacks, so I'll leave that as it is. But what you've seen here is an image that now, uh, without using any HDR trickery, just working with a straight exposure uh, from a raw exposure I can regain a lot of detail in the highlights and in the shadows using the process 2012 controls and then lastly let's come over to this extreme example here which was uh, shot from inside a church looking outwards this photograph was taken in uh, Boston and this is um, a type of subject that you would normally consider using um, HDR techniques to try and produce an optimum exposure. That is to say that by putting the camera on a tripod you might want to shoot a three or probably more likely a five bracket exposure or more to then take those bracketed exposures and then process them through say the Merge to HDR Pro feature in Photoshop or using perhaps the Photomatics program plugin uh, to um, then create a high dynamic range image that you could then process and produce a low dynamic range version that it manages to encapsulate all the information and detail in the highlights and in the shadows. So we do have a very contrasty subject here and I'm going to try and see how much that we can rescue this just using process 2012. So to start with if I click on the exclamation mark down here I can convert the image to process 2012 and then tweak these sliders to see what can be done. Now to start with, let me just have a look at see, seeing what can be done to try and bring out some more detail in the highlights. If I apply a darkening exposure to begin with, I'll leave the contrast for now, and then come to the highlight slider. I really need to try and apply the maximum amount of uh, highlights recovery I can. So I'm going to take the highlight slider right over there initially, and then maybe I can perhaps just ease off an exposure and make that a little bit brighter. And then let's see how much information I can bring out into the shadows. If I apply a brightening shadows adjustment, can you see now that there's actually a lot of information that can be brought out of the shadows using an extreme slider adjustment. And I think that now I can perhaps be in a better position to adjust the exposure slider to try and find the optimum setting for the exposure and then adjust the contrast just to bring some contrast back into the picture. And uh, lastly, come down to the whites and the backs, black sliders. So I'm going to hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. I can perhaps just see where the highlight clipping begins and ease off on that on the highlights. 
and then with the black slider do the same thing there. Here I want to actually introduce a little bit of clipping to try and get a bit of contrast into the picture and then perhaps play again lastly with the contrast slider there to try and find the optimum setting in between and maybe just one last tweak to the exposure. So if we compare the before and after there, there's the starting point and there's the edited version. You can see that what we've actually got now just using a single exposure working with the Process 2012 basic panel adjustments, what we've been able to achieve is actually pretty much like a HDR to a low dynamic range uh, image. It uh, shows you just how much you can push these sliders to get the kind of results um, that, um, that, that make the most of all the tones that are available in the actual image. So I hope that you found that the uh, exercises I've shown you here have been useful. Um, don't forget that you can uh, download and uh, find these images available via the uh, website. Just go to the images section and download those. And there you'll find some low resolution versions of these DNGs that I've been working on. And then I also suggest that you might want to perhaps try revisiting some of your um, older legacy photographs now that you're able to work with um, Camera Raw 7 in Photoshop CS6. I think you'll be amazed to find out just how much more detail you might be able to bring out of your files. And also to some extent I think that this particular demo shows that um, it's possible now to actually do high dynamic range type uh, image adjustments without necessarily needing to go through the HDR steps of shooting bracketed exposures.